So you know I've been putting this oh sorry, Salam alaikum. So I've been putting this off over some days now and I really wanted to talk about it but I was so sick so I just been bedridden and I was like okay I have to stop because I have to do this or else I'm going to keep putting it off. There are so many topics that I wanted to talk about and I was like, oh my goodness, when would I have time to do all this thing? But inshallah, I pray that I'm able to do it. It will be interesting and I really do want to hear people's story. And it's so amazing because I do so many videos and they don't end up getting posted either for one reason or the other. I just, sometimes I get self-conscious about them and then sometimes I'm like, I just want to post them or sometimes I didn't edit them or they didn't turn out well so I have to like just but I'm going to add inshallah like I will post this I'll edit this and I'll put post this it's so hard this thing like editing is so hard like doing this is kind of like okay okay I can I me mean, to talk on the camera of course I can I mean like why not I will but even though it has its own um challenges and then editing it and putting it out there, it's like, wow, wow, you really went there. I mean, could you tell that I'm still sick? Can you tell? Because I still am, um, I, ju I just taken um, extra fourth Tylenol, like the 500. I took two, I took two tablets and I'm still feeling a bit watery eyes and everything. But you know what? I have to do this because I've been putting it off. So let's go on. Okay, the first one that I would do, I actually want to separate this um, this video into two. So I'm going to be doing things that I heard as a black hijabi first. Things that I've things that I've heard that I've seen and that like some other people have experienced and told me about. So I'm going to be doing that and then. I was going to you'll find out about the next topic keep watching since I've heard that as a black hijabi you know my my struggles for wearing the hijabs and even using it it was it's quite long I mean I could tell you that once upon a time I only had one scarf that I could just wrap around my head and call it a hijab and you know sometimes people be like oh why this person is in like be like hijabi and, or non hijabi or and sometimes you don't you people don't factor in that some muslim sisters don't actually have hijabs like they don't have pashminers they don't have they don't have even have the simple ones like the the one that you just put on and go and that was me for longer for the longest time actually i only had this black net kind of scarf and i just use it and that was when i was in high school so yeah i only had one hijab one like that in high school it was so i mean when i look back at it now i don't i didn't even see it as a problem but i guess that's how things just work out I mean, yeah i think over a while after i found another scarf around my house and then that became my second hijab it was actually this kind of color and i used that hijab that scarf for the rest of the high school so uh, yes i had a few like maybe about i don't know maybe three four or five i don't know so but it was enough it was actually it was enough it was more than enough i mean like you're in high school you probably even like remembering it now, I'm like, wow. I mean, I've always remembered, but then. Okay, so things I've heard as a black hijabi, she's not even that pretty. Yeah. I've heard that, like, she's not even that pretty. And you know, you will, and this happened like roughly maybe around, um, high school a little bit of university you know how like i mean you have you have your own cohorts and like your own cackles uh, of groups that you 
middleweight. I mean, I have my own my own friend, like my good friend, like we've been together for 13 years. But I think I should call her best friend now. Um, yeah, friend for a lifetime. And she's a Muslim, and I hang out with her a lot. With her a lot. Doesn't wear the hijab like I do, but I, I mean, we pretty much are really good with each other in our own little company. But, and you know that's my company I mean she's Ethiopian she's from Africa and I was like I mean the first time I met her when we we're in junior high yeah when we we're in junior high I met her and I was like wow you're from Africa the first time she actually introduced herself to me I was like wow you're from Africa so that was good it was nice you know when you actually start school here it's nice to no, or see people, I mean, as a black student, it's always nice to see another black person, maybe in class or in school and everything. So, yeah, when I was in junior high, high school, it was, yeah, having do, that familiar, having those familiarity, familiar connection really helps a lot. And I had a lot of, like, Indian, South Asian friends that went to my school or that we went we attended uh, junior high and senior high together so and you know and one thing i know is that they always understanding about that oh she is she um she's an immigrant too so that's always like clear like she's an immigrant too like so they are kind of um they open space for you in a way I mean, not always, because some people, some of them, <laughs> sorry, I don't, I, like, I really, I'm talking about my own personal experience, I and mean, this is not to attack anybody, but some people can be quite, some, some can be quite mean, actually, in the way of approaching, or in how they deal with the other, or, you know, especially, I, I saw that a lot. And I felt that a lot, like, you know, you want to, like, interact with them and they just stop talking all of a sudden or they split all of a sudden. I, like, I got that reaction. And, you know, for the, for some time, I didn't know what that was, what that means. Like, call it microaggression, call it racism. I mean, I, I wanted to think that it's microaggression and it's not because of, big, and it's not because I was black. I wanted to I wanted to give them at least have benefit of a doubt like but then sometimes I feel like oh maybe you know they are still young <laughs> I don't even know I want to say that they are still young and everything maybe they will feel like that maybe they wouldn't be that understand but even back then I don't even understand what being black in western country is i don't understand it at all like i i don't understand the negative attachment to it so i mean coming from nigeria where everybody was black where like even so sometimes even with the way i thought about it was i mean coming from my country we have people that are as light as this as like say white um say southern asian say white people caucasian say say anybody light skin we have people that are that light i mean you can say that 80 percent 80 to in 85 or 95 or i'll say a good percentage of nigerians are mostly black but you still see that the lightest the lightest the lightest lightest um complexion sometimes even with that differences i've never seen my yes people do lean against being lighter i mean that's always been there even in nigeria colorism is there but not to the extent that it is in the western society you know what i mean like racism racism which is like <laughs> discrimination so having that kind of experience that oh you know um, i'm just going to see this as like any other lightest complexion that i've seen in nigeria but it doesn't work that way it's like a whole other kind of context and meanings attached to the skin color but sometimes give that benefit of a doubt that it is microaggression 
rather than racism that's all maybe it's because i'm black that this they are that they are reacting this way we will suddenly stop when you're talking to them or you know not wanting to sit beside you and everything like that you know every bit of pieces like that and you know some people some some black people actually say they have they have never or they don't experience this kind of thing this kind of microaggression or racism or whatever you want to call it but then i was like you know i don't know about anybody else but i mean and i'm sure that <laughs> i'm sure that some people are lucky and some people are they will get into like the most ridiculous and the most hurt, hurtful thing ever and yeah so yes i've heard that she's not even that pretty and it's always that kind of feeling that i got like mostly especially from like the sisters kind of group like oh she's not even that pretty and you know I, and honestly i don't care i don't no i don't care I'm, I'm, I might not be striking or gorgeous, but I know that I have my own percentage of beauty. I mean, nobody will be as beautiful as Prophet Yusuf anyway. Alayhi salam, but um, yeah, I am beautiful in my own way, in my mind, in my writings, and I think I look decent. So yeah, I've heard that too many. Yeah, it's it's always the most elaborate one. And it's always like it's upfront. I mean, sometimes they give you that kind of you're not part of us, and you go your own way. And oftentimes, I got in that kind of side of oh, it's about like the skin color too. When you're in your own kind of African group, I mean, like the diverse variation of skin color there, and you know that some people are well liked or well stored out or sort for than the darkest counterpart and i'm like and it's always like hmm i see where this is i see how this is but anyways that's the first one it was a long time ago when i actually first started it was when i first started junior high school and i heard it was i mean they said it so quietly but i heard it it's like is she even a muslim is she Muslim? I didn't feel hurt by it. Having that distance between you and people talking about will always is all is enough to say that oh you're not maybe you're, you're not welcome in this circle. But like is she Muslim? And you know, <laughs> I don't know why. Cause I used my job. I used a scarf or hijab or back then so when the person said that I I just kind of don't I, I didn't feel hurt by it I, I felt like it, it was it was just a question and if it wasn't just a question I don't know what else is going on but I heard that is she a Muslim and then like sometimes people assume that as a black Muslim you can't speak Arabic and yes I cannot speak Arabic but then when they go as long as saying that you cannot <laughs> like you can't speak Arabic as in like you can't pray or you don't you can't speak Arabic as like do you pray you have to pray in Arabic anyway like Surah Al-Fatiha and any other Surah that you're going to read, it has to be in Arabic. So I always assume that, really? So you go to the prayer room and then immediately everybody just look at your digital direction and be like, what is it? I just come to pray. <laughs> so there's that assumption as well, like maybe you don't know how to pray or maybe you don't, you can't speak Arabic. Uh, or even when they hear you speak Arabic, it's a shock. But sometimes I feel like me, I mean, it's, it's warranted. I mean, it's a valid reason to think that, oh, this person doesn't look Arabic. I don't, I don't think I look Arabic. So it's a warranted or a valid assumption to say, oh, I don't think that they can speak Arabic, which in true, I can't, but I can read Arabic because that's how I pray. Because you have to pray in Arabic anyway, so 
that's another thing that I've noticed. And besides that, I've had a lot of arguments in terms of the hijab with so many people, um, both Muslim and Christian. Like, you have people that come to your face and take it off, and you know, actually try to take it off. And that can be somebody that is even like really close to you, and they don't, and they know that this is based on religion. You just use it as a to as to respect the religion. Yeah, I'm a Muslim girl. I want to wear the hijab just for the sake of wearing the hijab. And yeah, I've had that before. I've had it so many times actually from friends from yeah from friends even from muslim friends i've had it like why don't you just take it off assuming that oh you will look prettier without the hijab and then when you ask them that you say this to a to like maybe say an arab or southwestern hijab you like no why don't you say that to them like oh you will look prettier without the hijab like no i won't even if I look prettier without the hijab, I still wouldn't. But you have people that say it's right to your face. You don't look that good with the hijab on. And I've heard it countless of times. I don't know if I, I heard this before or if someone told me. But like assuming that you're a convert, you're a revert, or anything in between. Mm. I'm not a convert. I was just born Muslim and Alhamdulillah for that and to this day and more and beyond this day. So yeah, I was born Muslim but I'm not a convert. You know, I've actually been asked if I'm Indian before. I've been asked because, you know, you wear the hijab and like, people ask me if you're Indian or something. But I've heard that before. Yes, are you Indian? No, I'm not Indian but I assume that some Indians are black so and are you a Muslim? I felt that as well. And what else? I remember something right now. Are you a revert? Are your parents Muslim? Are you Muslim? Where are you from? Yeah. Heard everything. Heard it. Heard it. And honestly, sometimes I do not want to think that this is out of spite or or anything like that i sometimes feel like maybe they are genuinely just asking but yes i mean when you're in this situation you will know you will know when people are being aggressive in their questions the way they ask even say it at all and sometimes people are genuinely really genuinely just asking and sometimes they are not and you can see that it's microaggression and you can see that it's racism. You know, my frame looks kind of cloudy today. And I want to say maybe it's because of my screen. But I just cleaned it and it looks a little cloudy. So I don't know. I actually don't know what to think. But just as well as I've experienced this amount of microaggression and racism, and even to some extent that like sometimes I I don't get along with some <laughs> with some people like after a while if you people show you who they are then you if people show you who they are they said believe them and you know you cannot be trying to have a human con connection or human relation when it is impossible or when people are not going to especially in a school environment and school environments we are just there to learn <laughs> but when it comes to working i mean as a co-worker sometimes you have to collaborate and that can get a bit tricky sometimes but you know i've always learned to keep calm pray keep calm and yeah and i mean within a couple of hours that i will work with that person i think it's I mean, it's good, like, I, they can be doing whatever and I'll be doing my own. So, that is, that, those are some things that I have experienced. That, yeah, mild thing that I've experienced and that I wanted to share as a Muslim, as a black Muslim, things that I've heard. Like, 
So if you want to call it stupid, dumb, or racist, or microaggressive things that I've heard as a Muslim. You know, I do want to say that with everything that I've explained so far, in terms of um, things I have heard as an hijabi, I have never been called a terrorist. I know that some of the Asian or Arabic counterparts will say that they call them terrorists, blah, blah, blah. But I've never, nobody has ever come to me and be like, you're a terrorist because you're wearing the hijab or because you're Muslim. No, I've never. I have never. Like, that's one thing that I was distinguished. So, and with that, I've enjoyed like a level of freedom in expressing myself as a Muslim person, as a Muslim kid, all through my education uh, years. So I will give, I mean, you can't always have it all. That's the way I can just see it. You can't always have it all. And if you, usually if you put your mind to something and to, a, to achieve a goal in life or anything like that, any good things that you want to achieve in life, you are more likely to achieve it. Just put your mind to it. I mean, Hala a future. That's what I would say. I have enjoyed a fair amount of freedom expressing my religion, you know, praying as a Muslim, praying my hijab. You know, sometimes people wear the hijab because they don't, they just don't want to get involved or talk with the other person. They just, I'm just going to wear my hijab because I don't want anybody coming around them. But then they still get people talking to them. It's like, well, good luck with that. I know, like, if I live in, like, a Muslim country and, you know, a... I don't want to, you know, I don't want to start naming countries, but I'll say like civilized, you know, in a place where like you can practice your religion freely and where like you can be as, because you can, even as a black person, you can't say that you're going to go to any South Asian and start practicing your religion. Like, you know, they might not even, they might not even see you as a Muslim, but they might see you differently there. So... There are, but there are certain Muslim countries that you can live as a black person <laughs> that's not going to drain the energy out of you. It's sad. Can you imagine being a human being and realizing that I actually do have a few choices in life? I mean, plenty of choices, but still a little few, unless you're a celebrity anyway. And yeah. Let's just celebrate and you can feel Yeah, I'm going to live here and have the best life ever. I mean, you can live in Dubai. Did I say Dubai? I did not want to <laughs> mention any country or in UAE. Honestly, you can live in any country, any Muslim country and practice your religion as free as you want. And that will be like a blessing. Oh, I go if, even if I live in Nigeria, if I live in Ghana, if I live in any place in African country, I think I can still practice my religion because of I'm already familiar with the with the space. If I if I lived in Nigeria, I think I am able and I could survive any other African countries. So I believe that I can live in any country in Africa and. Fully and freely practicing my religion because even Islam is not new in any of the African countries. No, it's not. But can I live in, in countries? Maybe in like maybe in certain countries I can live in. If you have to move, you have to even be diligent as in where was where it will sustain me, it, where there is a, a good amount of security. That will get, keep me alive. I mean, sometimes you can say that if, even America or Canada doesn't even fit the ballot, because you know the security is not guaranteed as in life security. 
people can see that you are not the next person that's going to be gone down and not given a chance to express and to advocate for yourself. That is just it. There is another wave of immigration happening from like America or Canada to African countries. And this is from like the African Americans moving back to the homeland. So don't forget that as well. It's always good to go back home or to go to any place that is close to home. Say you're going to go for Hajj. Like, inshallah, I pray that I go to Hajj. And Umrah, I really, really want to go. It will be a beautiful experience. It will be like a spiritual rejuvenation that's going to happen to me. And I look forward to that day. I can't even begin to tell you what I've felt and what I've thought about like visiting Mecca or Medina and Medina visiting the Kaaba. I can't even begin to tell you what I've thought and you know this story for another time but I pray one day that I'll go. And I pray that everybody goes there and that we all go there. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful even like as a visit but I do want to go for Hajj and Humra and I like it easy for me and for everybody else out there and with that I'll say thank you for watching yeah I'll say thank you for watching and please do not forget to subscribe like comment and share and I'll see you some other time So I'm looking right